Hello, it's Jason Pan for Cold Banker Dean Hop Realtors. Now, if you've been watching my last couple of videos, you've been hearing me mention that if you use me as a realtor to build from dirt, I, out of my own cost, will cover the cost of the third party framing inspection. And today, I'm putting my money where my mouth is. We're out at the community of Veramindi in New Braunfels, and the house that my client's getting built is getting inspected right now. And uh, I've got the owner of Alamo Real Pro Inspections out here, and he's gonna walk us through why this inspection is so very important and why you should make sure you have one. All right, we got Rodney from Alamo Real Pro, and he's gonna introduce himself, his company, and why this is so important. So my name is Rodney Twyford, um, owner of Alamo Real Pro Inspection Group. This is one of my inspectors out here. So we're performing an inspection on this frame inspection right here on this uh, builder. And uh, the intent of this is to demonstrate why a frame inspection is important. It is not to defame or discredit the builder in any way. All builders have different issues of their own in, in various uh, areas. So. What I wanted to point out was some of the things that uh, we're looking at. So there's two basic in builders. There's a track home builder and there's a custom home builder. Track home builders build the same product every single day. And uh, custom home builders, they allow you to customize it, make it your unique to your own build. And uh, that's pretty much the difference between a track home and a custom home builder. This is a track home build. Uh, there's three different phases of inspections that people typically do. It's a pre-pour, which is obviously before they pour the concrete. We're inspecting the foundation, how the rebar is set in, and things of that nature. And then a frame inspection, which is a pre-cover before they cover it with insulation and drywall so that we can see all the framing um, detail and see how everything's put together before it's no longer visible anymore. Uh, so that's what this one is. And then, of course, the final is a final inspection uh, pre-closing, pre which is very important. Um, so anyway, this particular house here, um, be, you, if you do go on a construction site, by the way, be careful where you step. There are boards with nails uh, protruding, and you certainly don't want to step on any of those. So uh, one thing I wanted to make specifically clear also is builders do not build homes. You have over 100 different contractors in and out of these very, homes very true. building this home. So as much as your builder loves you and wants to build you a nice property, I'm sure he does. But they're not the ones swinging the hammer. So that's why it's important. And you've got electricians, which are not plumbers, and neither one of them are framers. So you have a bunch of different contractors, experts in their own discipline, but they don't necessarily work together as a whole. So that's why you hire a professional inspector to look at it as a whole and uh, make sure you're using someone like Jason Payne, who is going to make sure that you get good quality control during your uh, build process. Um, nails these little nails right here you'll you'll see these nails right here sticking out of the foundation these are actually nails that were in the form boards when they pull the form boards off what results is the nails sticking out they just need to hack those nails off typically if they don't hack those nails off and they put the parge coating on it which is the concrete plaster you're going to have little rust bleeds oh. rusting through and you're going to wonder why is my foundation rusting there's an ugly orange stain because they didn't hack off the nail properly. Gotcha. So make sure they do all that. Another thing that they need to do is they need to fill these post-tension caps. I'm glad to see that they're using these plastic covers. So underneath that plastic cover is the actual post-tension cable where they have cut off. And by using that plastic cover right there, it's gonna prevent the rust from forming at, the, at that end. But they do need to grout cover all those. Let's see, I wanted to show you something real quick right here. Y'all have ever seen these cracks that you get on the corners of your foundation? A lot of times what causes that is, specifically with a, uh, a red brick, because it expands when it gets hot. You'll notice that the, the uh, flashing down here, which is supposed to be on there so that the brick doesn't actually stick to the foundation, it's just supposed to float on it. Well, if they don't put that same flashing at the corner, guess what? Uh -huh. The brick is going to adhere to that corner and what's going to happen when those two corners merge and come together pop that's where you typically get your corner pops so right here we're going to recommend that they flash that corner right there see if we can prevent that from happening uh let's see of course these penetrations so dry line and whether it be thermal ply or dry line there's a bunch of different manufacturers out there 
they require that you fasten every three inches. So pretty much everywhere you see a little hash mark, everywhere you see a little dot, there should be a fastener. So every three inches because it's a structural product. You can also use this for air barrier. Doesn't require you to nail every three inches. They can be 16 inches off center. That's fine if it's an air barrier or a draft stop. But if we're gonna use it for wall bracing, that's structural. And we're gonna to have to have every three inches. So we, we look for that and make sure that the uh, fasteners aren't gonna be overdriven, which I can show you that once we get on the inside. Um, another thing that we're looking here is ventilation. So anybody that knows anything about engines, you have to have a clean intake to get air into the engine, right? So houses breathe the same way. You have to have an intake. An intake is your soffit vent. An exhaust is your upper vent. We don't have any upper vents on the top of this roof. We have someone over here, over yeah, the garage. Ridge vent up there. Yep, there's a ridge vent there, but there is no ridge vent in the uppermost portion. So, of these lintels, so it looks like he's already taped over it. So there, there's missing fasteners. You can see the bulge right here where there is a fastener. You're missing some fasteners. You're missing several fasteners actually, and that steel lintel. So that steel lintel is gonna have to have fasteners. This, uh, this lintel needs to be installed over here. You can see the orientation of the... What, what's the lintel? The lintel is that steel piece. Okay, gotcha. Right here. So he's probably gonna go through that tape on there. Um, and then of course the steel lintel needs to be installed over this larger area. So the steel lintel is what actually supports the weight of the brick. Gotcha. This board right here is simply a trim board. It does not support the weight of the brick. However, we would like to see that the board on the bottom supports the board right. on the top. Not a couple nails. Like it is here. Okay. The board on the bottom supports the top. You can see, the top. see the differences there. The top board not supported. And there it is. Oh, so, so the other so the other thing that we're looking at is let, let's go back here so you see these slopes these two gable slopes right here we're going to have brick above the roof line up there on that gable slope and it's going to be need to be supported also by a steel lintel now these slopes there's a really handy app i want to show you real quick this handy app is called Pit. You see right there? So technically we only have one two by six that's gonna be supporting underneath that brick. And we should have three. So that needs to be properly supported before that lintel even goes on there. And I'm gonna show you over here in the garage where it is done properly to give you a better idea of what we're talking about. So here's the other slope. You can see the little bit of the daylight right there. If you stand back here, Jason, you can see a little bit of the daylight. Okay, I see. Okay. Yeah, I see it yeah, so on that side of that daylight, you can see the three two by sixes. That's perfect. That's what we want to see. Three two by six supports all the way up. That's going to support that load on there. And okay, so while we're in the garage, let me just go ahead and show some things that I saw walking through here real quick. And is see the strange guy walking around. He's actually the owner of the house. Okay. So he's kind of want to check this out too. I'm flying away. <laughs> so uh, one of the things that we also look for is, and I actually had a roofer call me one time because they were being sued because they created a water leak in a house putting on a roof. And the reason why they did that is because the plumber didn't put proper separation between the plumbing and the roof deck. So what I'm looking at right here is you got a plumbing line that's actually touching the roof deck. So that's gonna have to be separated two inches, two inches away so that the roofer doesn't potentially drive a nail through that, oh, yeah, that'd be that plumbing. No bueno if they did yeah. that. So that's gonna have to be uh, fixed. And also we look for is, PEX plumbing is a plastic pipe. It's kind of like a garden hose. Uh, when you shut the water off, it pulsates. When you turn the water on, it, it, it tends to move in and out. Well, if we do that right here under this nail guard, nail guards are good because we don't want to drive a nail through that pipe, but we also don't want the pipe touching the sharp edge of that nail guard. So that's going to have to be shimmed of some sort to prevent that 
wearing over a period of time. One of the things I do love that this builder is doing, if y'all know anything about CSST, CSST is corrugated stainless steel tubing, and it is a product that has had several class action lawsuits on it. So a lot of builders are getting away from using it, which is good. So they're running black iron gas pipe throughout the entire house. So I love to see that get away from the corrugated stainless steel tubing. Um, it's a little bit more labor to install it, but uh, price is probably not a whole lot different. So make sure you request that your builder is putting in black iron gas pipe. Well, we got our, uh, got our supports in. So what I'm looking for right here are these joist hangers to make sure that we are properly supporting. So another thing that we look for in the plumbing is um, when you pull a shower diverter, what does it do? It kind of pulls up a little bit on that spigot. And over a period of time, it's just going to get loose. That spigot's going to get loose. So they have it secured with a conduit strap, which is just not adequate. So what we're going to recommend is that they metal strap that into the wall to make sure that we don't have any movement when we're pulling up on that diverter. Because over a period of years, it's already loose. Can you imagine what's going to happen over a period of years? Yeah. And this is a stick-built home. What I mean by stick-built home is they don't use trusses. So you actually have load-bearing walls through this. So you'd be very, very careful on a stick-built home. Before you go to remove a wall, make sure you get an engineer to take a look at it and make sure it's not supporting something. Like if you were to see over here, you can see we got roof loads. This wall is supporting the roof. You can see all those members coming down right on top of that wall. So definitely these are load bearing walls. And most of the walls inside a stick built home are load bearing walls. Um, one of the things that I like to see in this builder is the electrical panel is actually on an interior wall. A lot of builders will put these electrical panels on the garage wall which is not proper because this fills up the entire four inch cavity of that wall. So how are you gonna insulate it? Yeah, it's weak So you've got, this, you've got this hole of no insulation. So when I see it on a wall that's not gonna get insulated, that's perfect, that's why I wanna see it. Good job, Builder. Yes. I don't mention Builder's name, but this one did a good job. Yep. Um, another thing that with these, uh, with the thermal ply, or actually dry line, same, same kind of product, all these areas need to be nailed, not just taped. So they should have come in here with some framing. Frame this out, frame this out, because this actually has to be secured to framing. That's okay. what we want to see. And that's easy to do. They can just fur that out, frame that in. Um, so not just the exterior walls, but you can also see over here, we have the same kind of product inside the house. Well, the engineer requires uh, what they call shear walls. What shear walls do is prevent the racking of the home. So we have a shear wall here, we have a shear wall here, and that just prevents the home from shifting side by side, you know, wind bracing, if you will. Dead cell, dead cavities in a wall, like this right here. This is a, just a, a non-use of the space right here. So you are not allowed to communicate that space with the attic. So they have to put what they call fire blocking or yeah, draft yeah. stop, and they did. So uh, what that does is it prevents, in the event that a fire should occur in this cavity, it won't immediately erupt into the ceiling or up into the attic area. So that's what draft stop does. Slow the process to give the fire department a chance to get out here and put that fire out. Um, we have our thermostat placed right here. This is a good place for a thermostat. We do not want to see a thermostat, say, right here in the living room. Why? Because we have windows opening to this area and it could shine light on that thermostat and give you a false reading. So we want to see our thermostats in an area that's central to the home, not too far away from a return air, but that won't get any light shining on it. Uh, you can see the blocking for the cabinets. That's good to see. Um, if you remember on the outside where we said that things that need to be taped up, you can see the daylight right there. So that's where water will will find its way in. We want to make sure that that gets covered up. And I tell people in my videos, water is your number one enemy of a house. Yep, absolutely. In fact, the things that kill foundations is either too much water or not enough. So this is not going to be a foam blown home, 
But I just wanted to let you know that if you are getting a home that is foam blown, um, that is a sealed unvented attic. Mm -hmm. And the problem with a sealed unvented attic is you typically have an air conditioner up there producing stuff like condensation, which is moisture in an unvented space. So what a lot of builders are doing, good builders, is they're putting a supply register and they're putting a return register to actually circulate air through that unvented attic. So the air temperature in the attic is virtually the same temperature as what you have on the interior of your home. That is highly advisable. Here's a, here's a structural member. So this is a, a engineered structural beam that goes all the way across. You see how thick, see how yeah. thick that beam is? Mm -hmm. We wanna make sure that we have adequate support, the same width as that beam underneath it. If we don't, then that's an issue. So we can see right here on both sides, we have adequate support underneath those beams. So they did a good job? They did a good job. Good deal. Yes. So I noticed quite a few minor things that should be easily fixed, but would not have been caught or likely not caught if we did not have a third party inspector come in. Yeah, once they, uh, th there's an old joke that we always say, you know, how are they gonna fix it? They're gonna pour the concrete. Yeah. Or how are they gonna fix it on a frame inspection? They're gonna insulate it in drywall. Nobody will ever know about it. If uh, they say to <laughs> city inspectors, like, oh, no worries, you don't need an inspector, we have the city inspector coming yeah. in. What have you seen happen when people rely on the city? So I remember uh, uh, way back, I was doing an inspection. I was upstairs going through the inspection with my client and a guy came in with his hard hat on and looked around a little bit and uh, we were just kind of the, my client and what he was doing and then he was in his truck down to the next house and they asked who was that was that the builder it says no that was the city inspector not trying to give the city inspector a bad rap they have a lot of homes that they look at in a span of a day they have 30 to 40 homes that they sometimes look at in one day and they're in and out in and out and they're like well he didn't even come upstairs i said exactly and that's why you hire me because they're not looking at everything they're in and out they're just looking at the basics throw a green tag on it and they're out the door next to the next inspection. So the difference between a city inspector and a professional inspector like myself, by the way, is one, they're not schooled and they're not licensed. So a city inspector, because they work for the city and they're not charging you for their efforts, they work for the city, they don't have to be licensed. Is that, does that go for when a builder brings in their supposedly third party inspector? They are supposed to be licensed okay. if, if well, if it's if they're working for the builder it's themselves yeah. no okay because they do I'm not like, no, we have our own third party inspector we come in right but who are their loyalties to so if they're hiring someone like me then absolutely they have to be licensed mm -hmm. but if i worked for that particular builder would not be required oh good to know yep would not be required so make sure you know who they're and then of course you also have to look at it this way if i'm a new inspector out there in the market and i'm looking to get some some work pretty quick I might want to partner with a builder and maybe I can have somebody feeding me so you got to figure out who's who's feeding this inspector yeah where are their loyalties lie yeah. where are their and loyalties lie tear up their stuff all the time are they going to keep bringing you back right yeah and, and like I say at the beginning of this video I'm not here to defame or, or uh, we call balls and strikes yeah that's it not here to defame at all and uh, we want to work with the builders and a lot of times custom home builders will follow me around with their yellow clipboard and they will be taking notes. Why? Because they're going to go right to their contractors and they're going to make sure that they get these things done. They want a quality build for their client. They do. Most builders do. So a builder really should not negate having a third party inspection. They actually should appreciate it because it kind of gives them a checklist of things that they need to go back to their contractors with. Yeah. And for this particular builder that we're not naming, Definitely, it's like we highly encourage you to, we want you to, because we, they want their clients to be happy yep. and satisfied with their home. They definitely want to build you a good quality home. And everyone's human, they miss stuff. So having a separate pit of eyes, especially professional eyes on it, really is an important thing to do. Yep, and it's, it's equally as important to have someone like Jason Payne that understands the quality of an inspection and make sure that you get quality control during your build process. I love it. Because once it's done, it's done. 
All right, special thanks to Rodney with Alamo Pro Inspection Group. I think he does a phenomenal job. As you can tell, he really knows what he's talking about. Now remember, my client didn't pay anything to use me as a real estate agent, so please don't go through this loan. And in fact, you win if you use me as a real estate agent because I'm going to bring in someone from Rodney's team to inspect your house when it's at this stage. So you definitely, hopefully, can see some value in that. Speaking of value, I do these homes tours to show my value to you. And hopefully you reach out to me and use me as your real estate agent. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, but most importantly, share these videos with your friends and family. And to contact me, all my information is going to be in the description box with a link to uh, Alamo Pro Realty Pro Inspection Group. I'll get it this time. All right, take care now. Bye.